The arrival of Homo, the human genus between 2 and 2.5 million years ago, marks a major turning point in the history of our evolution. Ape-like hominids such as Australopithecus had flourished and continued to flourish for millions of years with little change. With Homo, there was a sudden leap in brain size, a dramatic change in anatomy, and the beginnings of Stone Age technology. Perhaps the emergence of Homo also marked the first glimmerings of language, culture, and social structure based on monogamous families. The origin of Homo are unclear, however it may have evolved from one of the Gracie Australopithecines in Africa, exactly where and when remained shrouded in mystery. Homo habilis, or handyman, marks a turning point in human evolution. It could make stone tools. Humans have a lack of natural weapons, such as sharp claws or teeth. However, stone tools allowed our ancestors to become more carnivorous. The tools of Homo habilis were simple and included small, sharp flakes of rock, probably used as blades or scrapers for cutting hides and butchering carcasses. Some experts think that the Homo habilis scavenged leftovers of predators, rather than hunting live prey. Many of Africa's herbivores would have been too fast and strong to take on. However, a gang of rock-throwing hominids could have driven cheetahs from their meals. The brain of Homo habilis probably consumed a disproportionate amount of energy. Stone tools unlocked the rich source of calories in meat, necessary to power this hungry organ and sustain its expansion over the next two million years. A more versatile diet may have also helped to liberate our ancestors from their habitat. Homo erectus, or upright man, first appeared in East Africa around 1.8 million years ago. Homo erectus was the first hominid to leave Africa and seems to have spread across the old world with astonishing speed. By 1.7 million years ago, it had reached Georgia, and by 1.6 million years ago, it was in Java. Much of what we know about Homo erectus comes from a single individual, the Turkana boy. Evidence suggests that his 1.5 million year old almost completed skeleton was found in 1984 near Lake Turkana in Kenya. The Turkana boy was aged 8 to 11 when he died face down in the marsh that buried him before scavengers could destroy the carcass. He looked radically different from Australopithecus. Despite his age, he stood 5 foot 3 inches tall. An adult may have been well over 6 feet. His long legs and narrow pelvis show that he was upright and athletic as we are. However, his sturdier bones indicate a more muscular build. His face projected less than that of the Australopithecus, and he had a nose instead of flat nasal openings. Yet a prominent bony ridge jutted out above the eyes and would have given him a flowering expression. His brain was still smaller than the modern average. However, other physical measurements suggest that the late puberty or long childhood characteristic of modern humans had started to evolve. Our long childhood linked to the fact that we are born earlier in our development team than other animals. Human infants are therefore helpless and depend entirely on their parents, who tend to form long-term couples in which to look after them. The apparent late puberty of Homo erectus suggests that this social feature had already begun to emerge. The small brain of Homo erectus may reflect a lack of intelligence or simply a short lifespan. The shape of its skull suggests that it had a lower larynx than an ape, so it could probably talk. But the Dracana boy's spinal cord was much narrower in the chest than ours, and his chest muscles were unlikely to have had the nerve connections needed for true language. The hand axes made by Homo erectus were multifunctional tools probably used to skin and butcher animals. They were made with skill, yet hardly changed in over a million years, which suggests a mind very different from our own. It is as if this species was driven to make the same tools again and again. In 1997, 840,000 year old stone tools probably those of Homo erectus, were found on an Indonesian island that may have never joined the mainland. Some therefore believe Homo erectus could build rafts from wood or bamboo and sail across the sea. Paleontologists have also found evidence of a new type of society. One individual survived for months after being crippled, so someone may have been caring for her. A darker picture of early humans comes from Europe. 800,000 years ago, Erectus-like creatures left behind hominid bones bearing scratch marks from being defleshed using tools. 
Hominid bones found in Burgos in northern Spain bear scratch marks made when the flesh was removed, possibly a sign of cannibalism or ritual defleshing of the dead. Hearts first appeared in the fossil record 250,000 years ago, and ash deposits in China are seen by some as the remains of 400,000-year-old hearts. Yet Homo erectus may have actually used fire 1.5 million years ago. Cooking turned indigestible plant matter into energy-rich brain fuel, which therefore could explain the species' small teeth and intestines. It may have even transformed society. Food now had to be gathered, carried, and prepared, and the females would have been at risk from thieves. The need for a male to protect them could have been a possible origin of the male-female bond. I'm Peachy Fiend, and thank you for tuning in to Secular TJ.